Well, welcome back. Let's check interest rates this morning as stocks go lower. Yields are also going lower. The 10-year Treasury yield down 3.5 basis points right now, sitting at a level of 4.43% uh, on the 10-year. The Federal Reserve kicks off day one of its two-day policy meeting today. Uh, the central bank widely expected to hold interest rates steady at this meeting. The futures market is pricing in a nearly 49% chance of a rate cut in September and a nearly 63% chance of a rate cut in November. Uh, the Wall Street Journal's Nick Timoros writing this this morning. The debate around the interest rate path may obscure greater cohesion over the Fed's current wait-and-see stance. Nick Timoros joins me now. He is chief economics correspondent for The Wall Street Journal and the author of Trillion Dollar Triage. Nick, great to see you. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Thanks for having me, Maria. So when you talk about this cohesion uh, among Fed officials, uh, your article is uh, headlined Investors on Tender Hooks for the Fed's Latest Rate Cut Projections. When you talk about this cohesion, are you saying that basically everybody on the board at this point is saying, let's wait, let's see where this goes, no moves for the foreseeable future? That's right, Maria. I wish I could tell you that this was going to be a really exciting meeting and we'd be able to light our hair on fire afterwards. <laughs> but right now, if you look at the doves on the committee, doves are policymakers who are more concerned about causing an unnecessary downturn. Uh, and they just don't have a lot of ammunition here to lay the groundwork for an interest rate cut, uh, certainly not at the meeting that starts today, probably not at the meeting that they're going to have at the end of July. So the earliest opportunity to cut, you know, absent some magnificent surprise in the economy, would be September. And there's just too much time between now and then to be confident about what's going to transpire. If you look at the hawks, who are generally more concerned about inflation risks, they're not really pushing for a interest rate increase here. What they really want to see is just uh, suspending any talk of cutting interest rates. So you have unanimity right now around the Fed's wait and see stance. And I think what they're going to be debating at this meeting is what they would need to see, where their thresholds are uh, to move. Particularly right now, I think they're still focused on, on a cut. Uh, being more likely than a hike. And so the question is, what would you need to see on the inflation data or in terms of labor market weakness to, uh, to actually move away from this wait-and-see stance? Yeah, which brings me to the big week of inflation data that's on deck. Um, how important is tomorrow's consumer price index number then? I mean, it's interesting that, you know, it's Wednesday, which is the big day this week, right? That's the story of the week. We're expecting the CPI to be up one-tenth of a percent month over month and 3.4 percent year over year. And so the number, we'll get the PPI out on Thursday, of course. So the number comes out, CPI on Wednesday, on the very day, day two of the Fed meeting, where we're expecting to hear Jay Powell talk about inflation after the meeting. How important is tomorrow's number for this meeting? It's, it's more important than usual, in part yeah. just because nothing's going to happen tomorrow. They're not making a policy change. I don't expect the policy statement to change very much. And so the intense focus on this meeting is on the interest rate projections. Uh, namely, will officials put down their expectation of no cuts this year, one cut this year, or two cuts this year? There's a big debate on Wall Street over where the midpoint of the 19 officials' projections will be. Will it be for one cut or two? If it's at two, you could say maybe uh, there's a greater chance of a cut in September. If it's one, maybe they're going to wait until the end of the year. Uh, and I do think the CPI tomorrow could influence where those projections are. The projections, Maria, they get submitted a few days before the meeting. But policymakers can change them up until tomorrow morning. And so at 8.30 tomorrow morning, they'll get the CPI number. They tend to resume their policy deliberations at 9 a.m. on Wednesday morning. And so if it's a low number, I do think more people could move their, their dot or their interest rate projection uh, to show two cuts. If it's a surprisingly poor number, and we've had some disappointing numbers this year, that could keep people... Uh, you know, at the one cut or maybe at zero cuts this year. Uh, yeah. So it's unusual that you get something on the day of the meeting uh, decision that could influence, 
you know, the the thing that everybody's watching. But that's what'll right. happen here. It's it's a but, macro double header tomorrow. Yeah, it's a double header for sure. I mean, I, I guess you know the problem is is what gets me is that all the components are elevated, right? I mean, when you look at food, we still have a problem with food. You look at oil okay maybe gasoline has come off maybe maybe a drop in gasoline will help the numbers tomorrow but then there's rent even though rent has come down it's not coming down fast enough what are the components that you focus on mostly nick within the cpi well i look at three components within core prices so food and energy tend to be more volatile uh, to, to look at underlying inflation i look at core goods so goods excluding food and energy those are down over the last year. They're basically at zero percent. So that's hmm. where we were before the pandemic. If okay. that were to pick back up, then you would need to see even more progress on uh, the other two components, which are housing and then uh, services excluding housing. Housing has been high, but it's been coming down. It's expected to keep coming down because new apartment rents have been down for a while. And, uh, and the, the broader index tends to lag what's happening in the market right now. So, uh, so goods, so far so good. Housing getting better. That leaves services excluding housing. Uh, and that hasn't made as much progress. But these are all heading down. I think the problem for the Fed here, you know, inflation's closer to 3 percent than 2 percent. It's down a lot over the last year or two. Right. But when you get closer to 2 percent, uh, you, you want to see clear and convincing progress. You don't want to kind of squint and read it diagonally upside down to see if you're getting back to 2 percent. And so I think there are going to be some people on the committee that say, look, it just needs to be obvious at this point that it's getting back to 2 percent uh, with an economy that's doing well, right? The, the job market is doing well. The unemployment rate ticked up a little bit. But we added a lot of jobs in May. So I think you're going to have a number of people on the committee saying, what's the problem we're trying to solve here by cutting interest rates right now with an economy that's doing well and inflation that isn't, you know, obviously heading back to 2 percent? Mm. All right. We'll be watching all of that. Great analysis as usual, Nick. Good to see you this morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you.